Hello, and welcome to Soldering with Electronics. Today we're going to talk about what is solder, how does it work, and learn about some proper techniques. Let's begin. Soldering is a simple and reliable way of making electronic connections. Solder is an alloy made of tin and lead, and more importantly, solder is an electrical connection with very little resistance to current flow, which is very important to low voltage circuits. Solder, once melting, will behave like other liquids. It will flow on the least surface tension and flow over metal surfaces by capillary action. If the surface is clean, the solder will mix in every pore and molecule of the surface, creating a solid bond. This makes a good physical connection and is called wetting. It can be a good physical connection, and in most cases, as strong as the wire itself. In this example, you can see how the insulation is peeling back before the connection even budges. Solder is an alloy of tin and lead, typically. But for our classes, we will be using a lead-free alloy. As you can see here in this example, this will be a blend of tin and copper. As you can see here, this is a different type of solder to use. And if you look closely on the labeling, you will see the ratio of 60-40 with tin and lead. Soldering melting points is typically in the range of 450 degrees Fahrenheit. But solder alone does not make a good connection. You will also need a compound known as flux. This is because solder will not bond to an unclean surface. You can scrape away dirt and grease, but a tougher exterior of oxidation will remain on the surface. Those are the parts that are exposed to air. To chemically remove the oxidation, you must heat up the flux, and with the oxidation removed, the solder can then bond to the surface of the conductive material. The flux is blended with the solder composition. That puff of smoke that you see is known as the rosin, which is ingrained in the flux, and a good indication of when your solder is complete. Choosing the right soldering iron is important to the devices it's soldering. If the wattage of the iron is too high, it will damage the components. Because of the component's small surface area, it cannot dissipate heat effectively. A typical 25 to 30 watt soldering iron is a proper tool for electronic soldering and its components. A narrow tip, comfortable grip are all helpful when choosing a soldering iron. An iron holder, as well as a wet sponge for cleaning, are also helpful when soldering electronic components. A 25 to 30 watt soldering iron will create a temperature of around 650 degrees Fahrenheit at its tip. However, this soldering iron seems a little dirty. When the solder fails to tin the tip of your soldering iron, there are many variables that can come into play in this. Grease, burnt flux, and oxidation build up very quickly on a hot soldering tip. A dirty tip transfers heat poorly and melts solder slower than normal. It will actually save you time to clean the tip regularly as you're soldering. Luckily, there's a solution for this. First, unplug your soldering iron, wait for it to cool down, and gently rub it with some steel wool. This will clean off any debris that is stuck on the tip of your soldering iron. Then, plug back in your soldering iron and dip it into some plumbing flux. This will chemically clean any oxidation that is built up on your soldering iron. Once you've done that, you can wipe it with a wet sponge and the tip of your soldering iron should be ready for some tinning. Cold solder connections are a common mistake when beginning your soldering technique. Due to not enough heat applied to the connection, cold soldering connections can happen. Your typical cold solder connection looks dull and crystallized. 
uh, poor strength with connection. And uh, what we want to do is to avoid cold soldering connections. We want to be sure to heat the solder long enough, typically around two seconds. A good indication is to visually see when the puff of smoke dissipates. This is the rosin burning off, and at that point, this will let you know when to remove your soldering iron. All right, here's an example of a cold connection. And what I'm going to do is reheat it and suck away a lot of the excess solder here. And then I'm going to reapply just a little bit more solder, wait for that puff of smoke to happen, and remove in an upward direction. This is a good illustration to show us where a good joint and a bad joint is when it comes to soldering. From our convex to a concave angle is a good indication to show us what is a solid joint connection and what is a poor joint connection. Another good practice tip is to always have your soldering iron and solder on either side of the conductive metal wire. Another common mistake that happens when learning how to solder is something known as solder bridges. As you can see here in this image, uh, we have solder that has gone across our two buses of our circuit board. To solve this, we can simply cut through like a knife with our hot soldering iron, divide up the solder, and pull away the excess solder that is bridging between the two points. Another common tool that is used when soldering with electronics is known as a solder vacuum. When we have an excess of solder on our board here, we simply have to reheat it, pull the trigger on our solder vacuum, and it will pull some air back as well as the excess solder that is then reheated. Another tool that is used when removing excess solder on our circuit board is known as solder wick. We simply have to reheat the solder and the braided copper wire will actually absorb the excess solder, pulling it away very cleanly off the board. All right, so let's put to practice some of the things we've learned here. We always want to make sure we have a nice tinned tip on our soldering iron. And what we can see here is we have our solder and our soldering iron on either side of a conductive material. Waiting about two seconds, waiting for that puff of smoke to then rise. And then pull in an upward direction to make sure we are wicking away from our board here. We can then trim the excess leads of our component. And we always want to make sure that we are testing the component to make sure that it is a solid connection with the solder that we have just applied. It is also very important that we align and organize all of our components in as neat as a manner as possible. That way it's very clear and easy to see if there was a troubleshooting problem. As you can see here in this example, we have a very clean and neatly organized board. So if there was any sort of trouble, we can identify it almost immediately. All right, everyone, that's it for today. I hope this video was helpful. Please like and subscribe, and we will see you soon.